Welcome to Breaking the Chains. I'm your host, Paquita, and today I wanna give you an idea of why we're doing these videos. The purpose of the videos is to help to break the chains of economic, political, social, and cultural strongholds on the African diaspora, particularly those who are repatriating some terms that seem to continually come up, but it doesn't seem like a lot of us actually know what they mean. So today I'm gonna go over a few things so that in the future videos, when you see or you hear people talking about certain terms, certain aspects of the journey, certain aspects of the movement, that you will be aware and you will completely understand what they're talking about. So the first thing is the African diaspora. The African diaspora is members of the African community around the world, be it America, be it the UK, Europe, South America, uh, the Caribbean, anywhere that you find Africans that were born outside of the continent. The communities of African descent around the world. Now that, now that you know what the African diaspora is, now we can go into Pan-Africanism. Pan-Africanism is the principle of political union of all of the diaspora. So when you hear people saying that they're a Pan-Africanist, they believe in Pan-Africanism. They're speaking of their political, a political view, uh, how they see us politically. And that is us basically joining together collectively to further the African agenda. One aspect of, of Pan-Africanism is, refers to the study of the 500 years plus of suffering that Africans have endured, and that is called the Ma'afa. And you may hear some uh, Pan-Africanists and uh, repatriates who basically are one and the same uh, refer to the Ma'afa. And when they speak of the Ma'afa, it's basically the African Holocaust. Um, so. Let's get, I want you all to get these terms in your head so that when you hear them, you're, it's not kind of going over your head and you're like, what are these people talking about? So that's why I'm going over these terms to make sure that everybody's on the same page and everybody knows what is being talked about. Because um, for the most part, a lot of people kind of assume that if you're already, if you're on this path, that you know all of these things, which is not true. And I found that to not be true in so many cases because um, the conversations that I'm having, people are just completely uninformed. The concept of repatriation. Repatriation is basically the back to Africa movement, colonialization movement, they called it at one point. At another point, they called it black Zionism. Um, you have some people who refer to uh, Africa as Zion. So you'll hear different terms and you'll hear different ways that people, um, that our people will refer to the continent and refer to the movement, but it's all the same thing. Um, we all just trying to make this journey back to Africa. Now what I want to do now is I want to lay out the fact that repatriation is not a new concept. We have been making this journey back to Africa for a very long time and sometimes large numbers. 
but these things for reasons that many of us probably know one reason or another why these movements have been silenced these movements have been um, kept under wraps basically I believe because the white social structure in America or the the white economic structure should I say in America would totally collapse without us although they tell us go back to Africa thinking that they're insulting us <laughs> um, actually going back to Africa is not such a bad idea so as far as I can find um, repatriation journeys started as early as the late 1700s back in around 1787 the British government took about 300 former slaves to Sierra Leone in an attempt to basically return uh, some of the people to their um, native lands. In 1792, the British government made a second attempt to take 1,100 former slaves to Freetown, Sierra Leone. So 1787, and then again in 1792, the British made the first attempts to return uh, former slaves to the continent. In 1815, Paul Cuff or Paul Cuffe, a wealthy black man in the U.S., with the help of some Quakers um, in Philadelphia, uh, made the first attempt to return our people, some of our people, to Africa by taking 38 former slaves to Freetown, Sierra Leone. In 1820, Minister Daniel Coker led a group of 90 free slaves to Sierra Leone. In 1821, Liberia was formed not as a native state nor a European colony, but as a free state for uh, former slaves. One of the chiefs in Liberia allotted some land on the coast for uh, former slaves to colonize and uh, try to repatriate to the motherland. On July 26, 1847, Liberia gained its independence. They elected a black government and allotted free land for um, free slaves returning to uh, the motherland. At this time, Liberia became the top destination for African Americans or Africans born in America returning to the continent. Okay, so let's back up a little bit. In the 1830s, repatriation became a big thing again after the 1931 Nat Turner Rebellion. At this point, thousands and thousands of Africans decided that it was time to return to our continent. And again, Liberia was looked at as the perfect destination for Africans born in America returning to the continent. So it was kind of like the gateway back into the continent. So then that leads us to January 1st, 1863, when the Emancipation Proclamation was signed. We had already had some former slaves who had relocated to Canada, but was not finding resettling there um, basically the magic movement um, and a lot of former slaves decided that returning to Africa was the best solution for having a better life. That brings us to the 20th century when 
around the 1920s, the honorable and distinguished Marcus Garvey and many others began to really push the idea of us returning to the continent. We had Emperor Ali Selassie, I, who was of Ethiopia. Ali Selassie I, in the and in his in the Rastafarian movement, repatriation is one of the key components of the Rastafarian movement. Then you have Julius Nyerere of Tanzania. He was a huge proponent of repatriation. You had Ahmed Torre of Guinea. Then we had Kwame Nkrumah of the Gold Coast slash Ghana. He was a huge, huge proponent of repatriation. We also had uh, of Libya, Muammar Gaddafi was a huge fan of us returning home. We've been being uh, ushered back into the continent for a very long time. When you hear terms like uh, black nationalism, uh, Pan-Africanism, you hear people talk about Garveyism, which is basically us who believe in repatriation, we believe in the collective um, movement back, and believe in making Africa great again. We've had several waves of repatriates coming into Ghana, I know. Um, large waves. Some we have like a group that came out of Detroit. We had a group that came out of New York. A group that came out of Atlanta. So there's been several movements of groups of us coming in and start trying to establish um, a place for the African diaspora here in Ghana and I and there's other places around the continent where the same thing is happening. If we the younger generation, it is time for us to step up and take the reins. The older people are getting tired and as they're getting tired, we don't want their work to be in vain. It's people who've been there are people who have been at this for over 20 years. And um, it would be sad if we allowed it to, to all waste away because either we're apathetic, we're not interested, or whatever the case may be. We do have to understand that we as a collective people, we have to come together collectively, financially and physically to make this movement work. With all that being said, I want you guys to get prepared to hear some really great stories, get a lot of information. And any questions that you want me to address, ask them below. Put them in the comment section. There are a lot of people who are very serious about making this move and we want to make it as smooth as possible. So, Ready for breaking the chains, repatriation journeys, black nationalism, pan-Africanism, the African diaspora coming together. We about to do this thing, y'all.